Thank you everybody for the welcome and uh, the presentation. Okay, so this is uh, one of the last speeches. I think, uh, w I hope you like math because uh, we will see some, uh, some kind of math. So, optimal design and control of telecommunication networks. Uh, what pops in your mind? Uh, I think uh, in my mind at least uh, pops up uh, speed, efficiency, trying to squeeze every bit that we can from the network. Why do we have to do this? So, we will find why we have to do this. Uh, I will present myself, I will introduce myself, introduce the, mo the motivation. Why do we have to bother with the network performance? And why do we have to bother with uh, controlling the network uh, in the most optimal way? We will state the problem formally. We will not go into much details about the hypothesis. But we will try to maintain some kind of rigor and uh, state the, hypo the hypothesis as well because we will need them and we will uh, learn and understand uh, a lot from them. We will see the cost of the application because everything has a cost. Then we will move to the, the, the best part, I think, of this presentation, which will be the algorithm of uh, optimal resource allocation, which uh, I think that many of you, especially if you are in the machine learning community, any one of you from the machine learning community, okay, and optimization, you will see what I what I'm talking about and uh, enhancing the robustness uh, through a genetical programming uh, algorithm okay so let's start I think of myself as a failed mathematician I am an electronics and telecommunication engineer specialized in networking and uh, internet technologies I have been sucked into the Python community through uh, automation networking and uh, it's been a love-hate relationship with uh, Python. I'm trying to apply this, uh, what I have uh, studied with um, a startup networking uh, project, which is uh, next-gen networking. I think of myself, I am passionate about uh, models. I really like uh, to simplify reality, uh, cut it down to the, the strictest necessary things that we have model them in a piece of paper, and then try to go everywhere with that piece of paper. So why do we have to bother with uh, optimal control and uh, optimal design of networks? Uh, with this pandemic that we have, and uh, I am glad we, ha we are here in presence, in face, uh, we had to force uh, interaction through the internet. Uh, we saw that uh, although we have to thank the internet service operators and providers, we can do much better. And uh, if we can do better, we have to do better. How can we do better? Let's uh, state this hypothesis. We have to make two hypotheses. The first one, which is a practical one, we have to uh, make the hypothesis and we have to hypothesize that uh, there is a, some kind of control plane. There is a plane in which I can uh, forward my control messages, my signalization traffic. That is because I need to control the network. So I need to forward all the messages, all the instructions, everything to all of the devices. The second one, which is a, let's say, more of a theoretical one, we can, we can say that we can decompose the, the whole network, pick it as complicated as you want, pick two points, A and B, source and destination. We can decompose all of the paths that connect A and B in many cyclical paths. Why do we need this kind of hypothesis? We need this because through this hypothesis, we can say, we can derive an optimality condition, a very strong and tight optimality condition. This condition has been uh, proved by a man named Be Mr. Bellman in the, in the previous century. And uh, actually Bellman-Ford is uh, a fantastic algorithm because through a distance vector approach, we can derive an optimality condition. So we can have a fingerprint of an optimal point. He basically says that if we decompose uh, uh, the, the, the cyclical paths in uh, all of the paths, sorry, in, uh, in cycles, and we cannot find uh, cycles with, with negative cost, uh, then uh, I can say that I can find uh, an optimal path uh, with the minimum cost from point A to point B. I have to say that uh, in reality, the Bellman-Ford algorithm is an implementation of uh, this kind of optimality condition. 
which is not so used in, the, in reality. So where are we now and where can we go? Now we are in a, a, a kind of network in which we, have, we use a distributed control of uh, routers and devices. We want to go in a centralized control approach. And uh, with this approach, we can say that we can uh, uh, zero out the whole price of anarchy. The price of anarchy, we can define it as the loss of efficiency from a centralized control application to a distributed control application. So if we hypothesize that there is a big brother that can control all of the network devices, we measure the performance of the network by using a, a, a metric, let's say the throughput. And then we do the very same thing with a distributed control approach, and we measure the performance with the same metric, which is the throughput. We can say that in the distributed case, we can say that there is a 50% loss of performance. This number actually has been calculated by Mr. Rolf Garden and his team with a simplified model of uh, networks, because in reality, networks are too much complex. We do not have mathematical tractability, so we have to simplify a little bit the, the structure of the network. So with a centralized approach, I know that, in theory, we can gain 50% of the performances. OK, so what can we do in practical uh, terms? By using uh, the SDN technologies and by using a more centralized approach, we can uh, close 34% uh, of the gap, which means that we have a 60%, 16% to go. This actually has been, uh, I have proved this with uh, devices, SDN devices and uh, simulations. If you want them, I can share with you uh, with the GNS3 project. So all beautiful, we can gain performance, we can do much better with the network. How much does it cost, this solution? Because we said that everything has a cost. So by saying that we have a control path, a, a semi-distributed control path, we can uh, estimate that we need around uh, three, three kilobit per second, depending on the technology. If we switch technologies, we try different technologies, it doesn't change so much. But we need uh, some, like two or three kilobit per second of uh, signalization traffic. This is uh, if we make the hypothesis of uh, a one hop peer-to-peer -peer control plane. We, can, we have to pay this cost. And we have to face this kind of awful distribution of traffic. So we need to bear this in mind. What are the results? So the first one is the optimal resource allocation in network. This kind of problem, this is a convex programming problem because we have uh, a linear cost function and uh, a simplex constraint. This kind of problem pops up in uh, machine learning applications. For example, if you try to do a lasso regression by linearizing the first constraint, uh, the second row, the third one we, we don't need, that is just a, a linking constraint between the path variable and the arc variable. So just forget about it for, for of these two for a second. By linearizing this constraint and putting it in the, in the objective function, we get the most famous form of the lasso regression, which is the one mentioned by Tib Shirani. And uh, how do we solve this problem here? Because this problem here, it can give me the optimal distribution of traffic, which uh, means that uh, it can say for every single arc of the network, every single arc between pick two points, source and destination. By solving this problem, I can know that uh, you have to distribute, for example, 5% of uh, the traffic between arc one, 30% of between uh, arc two, and so on and so on and so on, okay? So how, does, how do we solve this problem? We said that this is a convex problem. We have a, a convex constraint set, which means that we, if we pick arbitrarily two points, we can always connect them. We can always trace uh, a straight line between them. Okay? So this is a, let's say, a fantastic situation. We are not so lucky in reality. Okay? The solution of this problem is uh, the Frankenwolf uh, algorithm. 
I took this image uh, from the article of the Lasso regression from uh, Tip Shirani because it applies here as well because we have a quadratic function in the uh, objective. So this is the, the pseudocode of uh, the Python algorithm. I had to show the pseudocode because uh, in the slides there was, there was not enough space to show you the Python code, but uh, if we go to the previous slide, uh, you have the QR code that points to the Python note, the Jupyter notebook uh, with the code, the Python code, okay? So the, the base of the algorithm is that uh, you, we have a for loop, which means that this is an iterative algorithm, okay? So we try to find the point ST, which maximizes the, the, the descent because we are in a minimization problem, okay? So we find the, the point that, that maximizes the descent. So I am here now with the solution XT. I find the point that maximizes the descent. I am trying to find the step size that maximizes this descent, and then I move there. I do the very same thing another time, and another, and another, and another, up until I reach the optimal point, okay? So this is the, the main idea, let's say, of the algorithm, okay? So by using this algorithm here, we can find the distribution of the traffic. The distribution of the traffic that can give me the most performance in the network. I measure this with, uh, I measure this gain of performance with an increase in throughput. That 34%, that figure that I mentioned before, was uh, obtained by organizing the network using this very same algorithm, okay? So, let's move on to the next application. Uh, here, again, uh, you have the QR code pointing to the, to the Jupyter notebook that describes the whole thing. If we have, if, if I manage to make it before the finish, I can show you the code. Okay, so the second application is about enhancing the robustness of the network. Okay, so again, pick a network as complicated as you like. We pick one special node, which is the root node, okay? And we try to connect this root node, root node with every node of the network, every node. The, the simplest, uh, maybe the simplest data structure that we can use to connect uh, this root node with all of the devices, all of the other leaves, is the tree structure. The tree structure is uh, very like the, in the networking uh, world. And uh, that is because we don't have any cycles. And uh, by not having any cycles, we are guaranteed that we can find an optimal path between two points. So we have to uh, think that in a network, I try to organize that with a spanning tree, which is a tree rooted in the special node that I chose before. And I try to connect all of the devices, all of the, net all of the leaf nodes in this network. But uh, if I cut an arc in that tree, that tree disconnects, that tree disconnects. So if I cut an arc near the leaf nodes, the leaf node will be disconnected. So it will not have any connection anymore. So what does a disgruntled user do to uh, do the maximum damage in a network like this? Where would you cut the network to cause the maximum damage? Near the root. Exactly, near the root. So how can we increase, increase the reliability of the network? We can do that by limiting uh, the number of nodes that uh, are dependent from uh, that arc there. How do we do this? We need a spanning tree, which is a minimum cost tree that, uh, that, does not, uh, that uh, tries to limit the number of uh, arcs, uh, sorry, of nodes that flow through an arc that push their traffic through an arc. So we do that by putting a cap, a max value on the flow in those arcs. So we do this for the arcs that are the most sensible, the most vulnerable, which are the arcs uh, near the root. We try to do that, and we find out that uh, by putting, uh, the, this is, uh, by the way, the formulation of the minimum spanning tree. And uh, I put uh, the, Constraint number four, which is a linking constraint for this uh, linking constraint 
for this problem, and uh, that complicates everything. That destroys the beautiful structure of the problem that uh, minimum spanning tree has. So in the classical case, in the classical minimum spanning tree, we have the prima algorithm, for example. We can use that. We find a minimum spanning tree. It's used in the STP protocol. It works very, very well. Right now, we put a, a another constraint, which is this linking constraint, and it breaks everything. It doesn't work anymore, the prima algorithm. It, does, it, it cannot find this kind, of, uh, uh, this kind of solution. So we have an NP-hard problem. This is an NP-hard problem. We, right now, we don't have any hope of solving this in a uh, short time. So what can we do? We can try desperately to find a solution, or we can use a heuristic algorithm. We have to be happy with a heuristic algorithm. And uh, the solution for some toy examples, some uh, small examples, is uh, this. If we confront the right-hand uh, image, we see that by picking uh, the node number 5 as the root, uh, we can see that 5, 6 uh, is the arc that connects uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 devices. OK? Moving to the left part uh, and picking again the, uh, the uh, node number 5, we see in this case that the maximum number of nodes that we have in an arc, uh, pick whatever arc you want, uh, is uh, 3. So. With this toy example, uh, again, for reasons of space, I had to limit myself to small examples. With this toy example, we can show that we go from four nodes to three nodes. But we can go to one node, to two nodes, to five nodes, whatever we want. This is a heuristic solution. So this has to be used uh, as, for example, a, a hot start uh, algorithm. For example, uh, in a two-step optimization algorithm, something like that. I would not trust, uh, with all of my heart, <laughs> a solution like this. But this solution is better than nothing. It's better than nothing. So by using this kind of, uh, of algorithms, we can design an optimal control, uh, an optimal network, and control it in the best way possible, because this is about controlling the network in the best way possible. So by using these two algorithms, I, show you, I showed you uh, one way with a, with a convex problem, and another algorithm, which is a heuristic algorithm, a genetic programming algorithm. Let's move to the code and see something. OK. so. This is the, uh, the Jupyter notebook about uh, the enhancing the robustness of the network. OK, so what I need is uh, yes. Is it better now? Mm -hmm. OK. So I think we will have to uh, do with this. OK, so what is the heart of the, um, of, the gen of the evolutionary algorithm that I used? You have to pick two solutions. These two solutions, I, d I obtain them with uh, the prime algorithm. OK, so you combine these two solutions. You introduce some kind of uh, mutation which is a cross-breeding mutation, you obtain two new solutions. On these two new solutions, you modify them separately. You introduce a variation separately, for example, by adding an arc and subtracting another arc. So by switching the arcs, you introduce this mutation. By using these two types of mutations and by sorting the solution in, the, in their fitness order, you can see that you get those kind of solution. So you have to, uh, let's repeat it again, we have to get to base starting solution, for example, with the prime algorithm. And then 
you modify those solutions, those two solutions, okay? And then you sort it again, and then you do this repeatedly. The good thing about this algorithm is that it's uh, blazing fast. It's really, really fast. They are very fast. Not so accurate, but very fast. So we have to pick a compromise, a trade-off. Do we want a precise solution, which uh, may not even be possible to get? Or do we want a, a solution which is not so good, but at least it's a solution? So we have to pick this trade-off. Do you have uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, just a question on the genetic algorithm. Um, if, if you start from like two baseline solutions, let's say that you got with a prime algorithm or whatever, and then you ha you keep like m mutating every solution, you have no guarantee at all that it's gonna get you like zero guarantee. Okay. Zero guarantee, and uh, this is a common thing because all of the machine learning algorithm, for example, if they are heuristics. They are heuristic because they have no guarantee of optimality at all. No guarantee. But the thing that we see, surprisingly, in the practice, it's that they are quite good. All of the problems that we have solved so far in all of the domain aspects, even in machine learning, they, have, uh, they, have, they are kind of precise. For example, with this solution here, uh, I try to calculate them with smaller examples and using a solver for the exact solution. And then uh, this uh, heuristic algorithm for the approximate solution, you get uh, a 90% of accuracy with this case here. But uh, in machine learning, uh, I know that they are uh, even better. I know for certain like optimization algorithms, there are certain some theoretical guarantees at least for. Uh, yes, like for example, this GT here that you see here, this is the dual of the problem. Okay, so you get the th since this is a convex problem, which is a very special problem. Since you get the uh, convex problem, you you have you, there is a theorem, which is the duality theorem, which says that. Getting this dual solution and the primal solution, primal solution is the thing that we get from this algorithm. The dual solution is the, G sorry, is the GT point, okay? If they match, you have a guarantee that they are, uh, that is a, an optimal point. <coughs> Even if it has uh, like a delta tolerance, okay? You are delta optimal, so it's a suboptimal. In that case there, which you are NP hard, it doesn't have any structure, so it's, uh, you don't have any guarantee. You are blind and you may have a million of optimal points, so you have to walk blindly by faith, let's say. Any other question? Just to shoot me a message, an email, uh, these are my contacts, uh, the QR code, uh, and uh, if you need the source code, the, the, the notebooks, the, the simulation, the setup, uh, the virtual machine, everything, I will give it to you.